So, you guys wanted some survivor videos from me, and I feel like it is time to actually make a start on that. So, today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be taking you through every single realm in Dead by Daylight, and showing off what I think is the best loop on that map. I'm going to be going through them fairly quickly, about 30 seconds apiece, telling you why I think it's the best loop, why I think you should be using this one, and this is probably aimed towards maybe newer players who don't know the map layout that well, and don't know where to get the most profit from their looping, however, I really do feel like this could be for everyone, because even when I was making this, it was kind of interesting to actually decide and figure out which ones I personally think you can run the killer the best at. So, let's get straight into it guys, with the first map. Alright, the first map is the Garden of Joy for the Wither Dial. Now, the building that we're going to be focusing on right here is the main building. This is absolutely broken. For those of you that don't know, this is probably one of the most unbalanced buildings in any of the maps. This is absolutely fantastic because you've got many, many safe vaults, no breakable walls, and you've got several pallets that are through the building and around it as well. So no matter where you end up, you should hopefully be able to get to a pallet, a window, or just be able to run the killer for a little bit longer. It's absolutely disgusting. Use this building as often as you can. Next up, we have the Eerie of Crows from the Fractured Boneyard. Again, this one is going to be the main building. Not only are the two really, really good floors that both have something kind of different, the top floor has a couple of pallets on it, the bottom floor has a couple of incredible good windows. Now, the killer can break the breakable walls, but still very, very strong building as well. And then you can also mix which layers that you run on. You can kind of go from top to bottom and kind of work your way around like that to really mix the killer up. Double backing also is really good just for keeping the killer on their toes and leaving a good chase and next up is everybody's favorite map rpd now for anybody who knows has been on this map you will know that it is this room here next to the main building this one loop and this one pallet can carry you and buy you so much time when it comes to running killers all you have to do is go through the pallet vault the wall and walk the long way around or double back even and take the long wall this way it's absolutely broken how strong this loop is and most killers can really really struggle chasing at this area of the map Now for Midwich Elementary School, we have this vaultable wall. In between two classrooms, there will be a room where you're able to vault in between them. This is absolutely fantastic for wasting the killer's time. Normally, there's two pallets on either side of the wall, and then you're also able to break away from these rooms to another really safe part of the map. Honestly, out of all of Midwich, this is the room that I really feel like throws killers the most. Next up, we have Dead Dog Saloon. Now, this, again, is the main building. The outside loop from the, on the top floor going down to the bottom floor can be so, so strong because you can just build as much time as you can, run around real quick. The killer won't be able to get that much distance from you and you'll constantly be able to reset the distance because they'll have to break the walls or just simply go through them, which will still buy you time. And if you're done leaning on the top part, you can always drop down to the bottom part and have two more vaultable windows that are incredibly, incredibly strong. Now for Mount Ormond Resort, this is going to be the main building in the centre. This is absolutely brilliant for leading killers, especially if you take the vaultable walls in the bedrooms, vault back in, and then use all of the rest of the tools that this part of the map has to you, the best of your ability. You've got tons of pallets, you've got tons of walls, and there's tons of really safe pallets that you're able to throw down, even early, to create as much distance in front of the killer as you possibly can. It will be really, really tricky for killers to be able to catch you in this area of the map. Now for the Amaoka Estate, the Sanctum of Wrath. Now, unfortunately, this one actually doesn't have a main building or anything that is absolutely lethal. So I'm probably going to give it to the Shack. Because more times than not, the Shack will also lead into a really good jungle gym or three lanes, T and L wall, something like that. So you're always able to kind of loop to and from those to really keep your strength up to a high. Not the best, but Shacks are always strong as it is, depending on what killer that you play. And the other Yamaoka estate, we have the family residence. Now, this one does have a main building, and this is the building that you should be absolutely abusing. This is insane. Easily one of the most underestimated loops on, in the games and on any of the maps. The amount of breakable walls really helps with the fact that it'll waste the killer's time. You've got really good god loops as well in the fact that you can vault walls, get to other areas of the map, other loops, and then all of a sudden, when you're done with that one, string back to the main building and go for a second time around. 
Next up, Gideon Meat Plant, the game. Now, this entire game is basically one big loop because the amount of god pallets. But if I had to pick one particular part of the map, it has got to be this little workshop area here with the hole that leads down into the bathroom. There's two incredibly safe pallets. There's a decent vault. And if you've always got that much distance in front of the killer, you can drop down into the bathroom and make it to two other incredible safe god pallets. But as I said, this entire map's god pallet central, so you should be fine. Now, Springwood, Badham Preschool, this is going to be all variations of the map, 1, 2, 5. It is, of course, going to be the school. The top part and the bottom part are both incredibly strong, but the top part is much, much stronger because you have the fence outside with the vaultable wall that is absolutely lethal for getting distance on the killer because the killer has to horrendously go out of their way to carry on the chase. This wall here, absolutely lethal. You can make so much distance doing that. And, worst case scenario, if your killer is catching up, you've got like three or four safe pallets to use as well. Grim Pantry for the Backwater Swamp is going to be the main building that I also think that some people can underestimate. Most people like this loop there, the one with the very clear wall, but the one with these double vaultable walls here can also be absolutely lethal against killers because as soon as they vault it or work away around it, you can vault back and then maintain the distance, move around the map, and if worse comes to shove, you can go downstairs where there's a load of pallets and more features for you to use. And for the other backwater swamp, the Pale Rose, this one is going to be the boat, of course. Again, a couple of really good pallets around this. You'll always be able to run to hopefully another loop close by. And there are some insane vault vaultable walls up here as well that can take you to completely different areas of the boat in case that you need to use something like a pallet from the downstairs area. Honestly, you can lead a killer here for absolutely minutes at a time if they don't know what they're doing. Or even if they do, sometimes it's just insanely difficult to get pressure. Now for the Temple of Pergation in the Red Forest, we of course once again have the main building, again because of how strong the vaultable walls are and the fact that this entire tile leads to the rest of the tiles on the map, so you'll always be able to branch from one to the other. And the killers always have to take a huge section away to kind of get to you. Once you've vaulted a wall, they have to move out of the way to find another one. It can be risky, but I still think it's the best on the map. And the Mother's Dwelling, you'll see a theme here guys, it is again going to be the main building because it's in the centre of the map and that window right there is one of the strongest in the game. The amount of time that it costs for the killers to have to deal with that window is absolutely insane. Then you've got again, you can move to de several different tiles on the map, you've got another really good couple of pallets around it to make it even stronger and more vaultable windows as well just to kind of keep that edge in front of the killer, it's lethal this map. And now we're going to the Larry's Memorial Institute with the Treatment Theatre. This one is going to be the office slash library. Um, it's honestly, a lot of this map is kind of very good against the killer. However, this is the one that I would really give it to the most. You've got a couple of vaultable windows that can really give you space between the killer. And that pallet is one of the best pallets in the game. If you chuck that, the killer will have to break it. And you can get in some incredible distance on it as well. So yeah, I would say it's this part, although there are several strong parts of this map. Now, next up, Haddonfield, we've got Lampkin Lane. Now, most people may think this is the main building, but this is not. It is one of the buildings towards one of the corners because of the amount of very, very safe vaults that it's got and the fact that in front of it, behind it, and to the side of it, you've also got some incredibly strong pallets as well. So no matter which way that you go, if the killer is catching up to you, you can simply quick make a quick di diversion to one of the pallets and then go back to the main building once you've got some distance. Again, an absolutely brutal map if you're against them as a killer. The Crotus Pren Asylum, Father Campbell's Chapel, again, the main building, many, many strong vaultable walls, depending on what tiles placement that you get, this can have quite a bit of variation to it, but you've got the upstairs, you've got the downstairs, again, you can lead into any other kind of loop on the map as well, so if you do get close, if you don't have any pallets available, you should hopefully be able to make it to a jungle gym or a TNL wall, fairly simply, but this building is still strong, even if the killer does break the breakable walls, if you run this well, you should still absolutely be able to waste their time here for a little bit. And for the other Crotus Pen Asylum one, it's the Disturbed Warbed. Surprise, surprise, the main building, specifically that window there that I just vaulted, that is absolutely brutal. You can vault it, the killer will have to seriously go out of their way to kind of get around it, and all you have to do is simply vault back, then use the pallets around the map, use several of the other vaults, and again, because it is in directly in the middle of the map, you can then take this as the middle tile and branch to the other tiles on the map. It's, again, absolutely lethal. 
Now for Auto Haven, we have Blood Lodge, Wrecker's Yard, and Azeroth's Resting Place because the best part about all three of these maps is the Fun Bus. Now for those of you that don't know, it's nicknamed the Fun Bus because you can waste a lot of killers' times here. The fact that it's got a very, very safe vault, the fact that it's got a very good pallet, and it will always be next to a couple of tiles that you can also run into the sequence to really take the most out of what this tile can offer. As you can see, I've just branched to that one left, going straight back to the Fun Bus, and it's just as safe as it was. Now, next up for Auto Haven, we have the Wretched Shop. Now, most of you may think it might be the shop itself. I would give it to this tractor. Honestly, I have ran killers here for so long because they really, really mind game themselves for the most part. It's quite safe to wait at the top of there as well, depending on what killer that you're playing. So, you can be a little bit greedy with it. And if the killer is making distance, you've still got this horrendously safe tile to work with as well. And again, it leads on to other tiles really well as well. Auto Haven Wreckers, next we have Gas Heaven, and yes, this is the main building. This one is absolutely lethal. I cannot stress to you how painful it is to run a killer here. As a killer, it is absolute agony. Even if you break all the breakable walls, even if you drop all the pallets, good survivors will still be able to run you around this and waste your time, if nothing else. It can be absolutely lethal. And if you know what you're doing and you've got the right perks to back you up, then you're going to be running the killer here for a while. Now we're on to Coldwind Farm. The first one is the best map in the game for killers, not Fractured Cowshed. This is going to be, of course, the main building. Again, this room with the two breakable walls and the uh, vaultable wall is absolutely brutal because whenever a killer goes to break one of the breakable walls, you can simply run in the opposite direction, get tons of distance, and if the killer does make it kind of a little bit of distance on you, you've got another vaultable wall and you'll be surrounded by at least three very strong pallets for you to work with. So get used to running this if you haven't done already. Torment Creek is up next, and again, it is going to be the main building. Again, you can always tell what makes a really good loop in this map. It's strong walls, strong pallets, and, you know, not many breakable walls. Now, this one is surrounded by about three or four pallets. Again, it's in the middle. You can be able to kind of go to separate tiles after this if the killer does get some distance, but the, amount, the one vaultable wall over here is absolutely ruthless. Even if the killer does break that wall, you can still get tons and tons of distance depending on how you run it. And next is the Thompson House. Again, this is going to be the main building, again, because of the really strong vaultable walls, the fact that it's got a couple of really strong pallets around side it, and you can actually really easily mind game the killer here from that top window there. If you kind of bait it, they will try and maybe go downstairs before you've actually vaulted, wasting more seconds, but do be careful, especially controller players. If you do it too early, you will actually hop into the locker instead of vaulting, which can get you killed. So be careful, but this is the tile for you. Alright, next up, the Rancid Abattoir. Now, this, of course, is going to be the main building for the sake that it has a couple of really, really strong vaultable walls. Again, it's definitely a theme. The more vaults, the more windows, the more pallets that an area of the map has, it's probably going to be the strongest area of the map. But you can get some incredible distance by vaulting these certain walls that the killer has to go out of their way to go around. And then once they catch up the distance, you've got a couple of safe pallets to use. And then you can also run this into any other strong tile on the map. And the Rotten Fields, easily the weakest variant of the Coldwind farm. However, I would give it to Dimitri. Dimitri is absolutely lethal if you know how to run this. And if you're against a killer that can't really run this well, like the Trapper, you're able to run this kind of waste his time, several spins around the tree. And then if you do have to waste a pallet or if you do have to move on, there will no doubt be a very strong tile next to it, even a, like a TNL wall or something like that. No matter what, you should easily be able to run the killer here for a minute or two, even if the pallet has gone. And the final group, we have the Macmillan's Estate. The first is the Groening Storehouse. Now, this is one of my personal least favourite maps on the game because I hate this main building. It is absolutely lethal. Even if the killer breaks the breakable walls, the couple of windows that it gives you and the couple of pallets can absolutely waste minutes of your time, which will give your teammates plenty of time to make sure that gens are being progressed as easily as possible. Just keep using the vaultable walls. Make sure that you're always safe and close to a pallet. You'll run them for hours. And Suffocation Pit is up next. Again, I'm going to give it to the main building. Again, you can waste a lot of the killer's time here. The vaultable wall that it gives you is really strong. Even if the killer does break the breakable wall, the fact that you can just dart right is really strong. And then again, you've surrounded by about two or three great, great pallets that you're able to use if the killer does make some distance. So make sure you're using the vaultable walls. Make sure you're backing them up with pallets. And again, you should be absolutely fine.
Ironworks of Misery are next, and this one, again, surprise, surprise, the main building. If you take a killer up to the top part of this, you will waste minutes of their time, and that is absolutely huge. Vault this wall, work your way around it, and the killer will have no choice but to break the wall or to suffer going around it for the second time. If they do not break the breakable wall up there, immediately take them back, they will not catch you. It is brutal. And even if they do break the breakable walls, you should still be able to run killers fine on this tile because it's surrounded by good pallets. Shelter's Wood is up next, and this one again is probably one of the fairly weaker maps for Survivor. This is very much a killer-sided map. I love this map because it's killer-sided. So I would say it was the Shack. The Shack is kind of always in the same place, and it's always got a couple of decent tiles next to it, so you can always use the Shack as the middleman and kind of work from one tile to the Shack to the next, back to the Shack to the next, and kind of use it as a little hub for, so you can make sure that you're safe and sound. And finally, we have the Coal Tower. The Coal Tower is going to be the main building. Again, this is probably one of the most oppressive tiles on the map for Killer. That vaultable wall is absolutely lethal against Killers. Even if they break the breakable walls, you're still going to get much distance. You're still going to be able to lose them because of how kind of quick and small this little place is. You, If you work it correctly, you really can mind game the Killers and have them lose you very quickly. And again, a couple of really good tiles next to it, some really good pallets. You're always going to be in for a good time on this tile but guys that is it thank you so much for watching i hope you really was able to take something away from this i hope i haven't just rambled and basically said the same thing the first thing the, the only thing that you really need to know is that main buildings for the most part are going to be your best friend if you can run a killer at the main buildings you should be absolutely golden for most of the uh, for most of the trials so get your practice in make sure that you keep doing what you're doing and i'm sure you'll be wasting hours of the killer's time absolutely no problem uh, i also just want to say a very much thank you to luna for helping me get all the footage for this it took a lot of time to get this more time than i was thinking but we did it and uh, yeah special thank you to her for that but that is it from me today guys don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and if you was able to take something away from this let me know if you want to see some more survivor content in the future and i will see you all in the next video so thank you again take care bye bye for now